Hello, good evening, and welcome to the live Hemingway Jones Pen Show. How is everyone? I see many people are joining us live already. It's always really encouraging when I see so many people already here. So many likes already. I appreciate that. Thank you for the likes. And I think there's a way to sort of upvote the live stream if you see a button for that press it as well if you would i'd appreciate it any of the positive buttons are very very welcome so welcome to our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens inks journals and journaling and just about everything and anything to keep you inspired to keep you writing, to keep you engaged with all of these wonderful writing instruments that we spend so much time, almost a disproportionate amount of time, obsessing over and just luxuriating in these amazing, amazing fountain pens of ours. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it a great hobby? I mean, we could be doing a lot of other things that are not quite as fulfilling as writing letters to each other here on the channel we have membership with different tiers and the cognoscenti and illuminati members write letters to each other and to me and it's super fun we're really getting to know each other i think we're seeing evolution in all of our handwriting um you know i think about some of the folks out there and how when we first started our handwriting looked one way and then it looked another way as we went on. And handwriting is one of those things I'm going to speak about tonight. There's a whole bunch of different fountain pen goals and things I'm tweaking and things I'm looking at. And different directions and different rabbit holes I've fallen down. And different worlds I've discovered. I mean, I say that from a fountain pen, we can go anywhere and everywhere, and we do. And it's very true. A fountain pen and a pen is the gateway to all of your ideas. It's the way you enshrine what's in your interior world out into the physical world. It's a way of taking an idea, making it manifest, writing it down, turning it into a goal, into a plan, into an expression, into a connection with someone else. It's a physical manifestation of some hope, dream, aspiration, something very, very special, deep, personal, unique to you. And then manifest through your handwriting onto a piece of paper by simply, simply drawing lines that equal letters that add up to words that add up to sentences and these sentences and words and how we put them together are very unique to ourselves and if i were to give you any advice into that any advice lean into the weird lead into the unique lean into whatever it is that makes you you don't be afraid don't hide it away we were not given a lot of time on this, on this beautiful world of ours spinning around the sun, hurtling its way through the universe. Occasionally the moon blocks out the sun so extraordinarily. You're not given that much time to see these things, to enjoy it. So don't hide. Don't hide who you are. That's, that's my advice. And look at this, I have someone to recognize this evening, someone who is just one of my favorite people in the world, the, the mighty, the lovely Lad Gardner, with a $50 super chat. Thank you, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. That is extremely, extremely kind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy birth birthday for April 15th. Whose birthday is it April 15th? Um... That is, um, is it yours? If it is, we got to do something. But uh, thank you so much. Lad is such a great support for me. He listens to me when I'm like upset about a video and how I don't think it got as many eyes on it as I wish it had. 
Um, I told you guys before, and I think it's very accurate, that I am an interesting mix of ego and self-loathing. So I both think that my videos are amazing and that each of them should get 100,000 views. And I also think that they're awful and embarrassing and I should have never published them. So I'm always sort of bouncing from these two extremes, which makes being my friend very interesting. So I'm really happy that Lad and many others are along for this ride and indulge me and my eccentricities on a daily basis, as do all of you who watch. I'm glad you enjoy this content, and if you've been watching for a while, I would humbly ask for you to subscribe. I'd love to have you along on this journey with us, and then I can get to know you, and that's super fun super duper fun and i need to recognize another dear friend of the channel terry edgington with a 1999 super chat for the travel budget thank you thank you very much extremely kind i do have a bunch of travel lined up this year so thank you i'll i'll earmark that for imogen my daughter something special for her we are heading to the Mount Washington Hotel again. Do you remember the Mount Washington Hotel? It was in my How I Travel with Fountain Pens video. It's this gorgeous old world hotel at the base of Mount Washington. You can sit on the veranda and watch the Cog Railway make its way up the broad back of that beautiful peak making its way to the rocky and often snow-capped summit. Thank you so much, Terry. You are lovely. I appreciate it. You are the best. Thank you, and thank you for being here. So, yes, the Mount Washington Hotel, and what we're going to do this time is we're going to go there, and we're just going to stay. We're not going to go explore. We're not going to look at rivers or covered bridges, although all of that is lovely. We are simply going to go. We're going to park. And then we're going to eat um, a lot and stay. And we're going for my birthday, which is in May. My birthday is coming up May 17th. And I will be very old. I am knocking on 60. I don't know how that happened. But I'll be 57. So very, very good stuff. I see. I'm going to talk about some of the folks that are here. I see Fountain Pen Therapy is here. Always lovely to see my new friend Vincenzo here, who will be joining us on this broadcast in only two weeks. So that will be super fun. We'll have him on. We'll see what's on his mind, see what's going on over on his channel, which is one of the few channels I watch. Um, he does a wrap up of what's going on in the fountain pen world that I find very, very interesting. And um, I don't think he's done it for a couple weeks, though. But that's what he normally does. He's He's got pen reviews over there. So very, very interesting stuff. I can't wait to see what's going on in his world. So mark your calendars. Not sure what that date is. What is it, the 23rd or something? I think so. Uh, Tuesday night. But you know me. I'll talk about it way in advance. And um, all of that. So I need to recognize someone else. The mighty Clive Bassant with a 499 pound super chat. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. For the T Fund. The T Fund. Now you guys know. Do you see how this channel's very, what's the word there? It's very meta, isn't it? It all ties together. It's We're always referencing, cross referencing different videos. Clive. Thank you. Thank you for the generous super chat. It does help quite a bit. And yes, there is a tea fund. That video was very expensive to produce. It was the five best inks inspired by tea. Probably the best video I've ever made from a pure aesthetic and technical point of view. I love it. I think it's fantastic, but I also kind of hate it. I watched it again, and I wish I had front-loaded some of the inks before I got into the history. So this is how I think. I'm like, oh, I probably should have done one of the inks and then done the history. But hey, you know, that's how it goes. But 
I do really like that video. If you haven't watched it, please do. And let me know what you think. Um, it did really well. Had some of the great internal metrices of people watching all the way through of any of my videos, um, which is great. And um, I'm very happy with it. But if you haven't seen it, see the five best inks inspired by T. I may do more. I'm ready to film another one. Even more expensive, more grand. I just need nicer weather. Which it is getting nice. But thank you, Clive, for that. Very good. Oh, Vincenzo says he's looking forward to coming on. I'm so glad. I'll need a nice picture of you for the thumbnail. So start picking out a picture and send one my way if you would. Because we'll do like a nice promo thumbnail. So thank you very much. Oh, we have one from Alfredo Gallardo. A very generous super chat. Very nice. 200 Mexican dollars. Is that what that is? If it's not, forgive me. I'm not sure what MX is as a currency, but thank you very much. I do appreciate that. For the ego increasing fund, your generosity increases my ego. Thank you very much, my friend. I do appreciate your vote of confidence in this channel. I do strive, Alfredo. I do my best just to give you guys interesting videos to make it different than anything and everything that's out there, to sort of pass on my passion for these objects to you, to you, Alfredo, and to everyone. That's my goal here. So thank you very much for your confidence in me. That's what encourages me. This kind of connection and part of the reason why I do the live show is because it encourages me because sometimes it's discouraging. YouTube is very tough. I'd probably do better if, if I were really trying to develop a YouTube channel, I would do the same video over and over again. I would come up with a formula and I would do it over and over again. That's what YouTube likes. It likes consistency. So I don't know if you've ever seen a channel like, um, I think it's called Just One More Watch with this um, Scottish chap who lives in Australia and he does affordable watches and he reviews them. His videos are exactly the same. I think he puts out one or two a week and he's a very affable gentleman, very interesting, very good at making a connection through the camera, very warm, has some taglines, says and does the exact same things in the exact same segments in the exact same order with the exact same backgrounds every week, week after week, year after year. And his channel is rewarded for that. I think my channel is different. One week you have a video on tea and a history of tea and these beautiful aesthetic pictures of of tea with the inks and then I'm relating the taste of the tea to the color of the ink and showing you what it looks like on paper and how it behaves and which one I like the best and all of that. That'll be one week and then there's this week where it's a review of the Mahjong Q1 which is um, not something I do a lot of. I don't do straightforward reviews very often but occasionally I see a pen I really like and I do it. So that's coming out this week and it's on the Mahjong Q1 and it's called, is it awesome or just adorable? Because that is the question with that pen. Is it just adorable or is it awesome? So I do that. Then maybe, you know, it's writers, fountain pens of famous writers, fountain pens in film. Um, right now editing part two for fountain pens and film that's coming the second part of famous writers and their fountain pens is coming there are lots of things coming but everything is so different one week you get a travel log always related to writing or journaling and all that um i actually haven't done anything on journaling in a while i'm probably overdue for that and i have some good ideas about handwriting too so the channel is all over the place, but in a very, very fun way. As is this live show. 
which also is not very consistent, but it's a lot of fun, isn't it? Speaking about fountain pens directly, you and me, every Tuesday night, how much fun is that? I really enjoy it. So let me show you what pen I've been writing with a lot, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, first of all, here's a, a Penco flip notebook. These are called reporter's notebooks. I quite like them. Why do I like them? I like having it at the top because I can film from the side and you can see the nib on the paper, which is very nice. This is a nice small size. Uh, Brendan Schmidt of Atlas Stationers sent me this. Very nice to sort of demo it. I've been enjoying it. It has um, decent paper, seven millimeter ruled. It's made in Japan. College ruled, in fact. Penco, composition notebook. And it has conversion tables in the back in case you don't do what I do. You know, like tonight I was I was trying to figure out how much 30,000 rupees were in U.S. dollars. So I asked Siri, that's my conversion table. And we'll talk about why. Why was I talking about rupees? We're going to talk about that in a minute. But so here we have it. This is the Penco. And this is the pen I've been using quite a bit lately. Does anybody recognize this bad boy? My only regret, I wish it still had the translucent stripes. I really do. I don't know why they did away with that. But as a pen, this is really interesting. I think you remember me last week speaking about how I regretted that I, I got this pen and then the Mont Blanc 149 origin series 100 year anniversary pen came in and this one i set aside well now i've done the opposite i've set the mont blanc back in the box and i've taken this one out and i've been using it almost exclusively and the reason is i really love this pen and i'm going to say something in a minute that is controversial you guys love me when I'm controversial. I know you do. But um, this is such... Such a fun pen to use. So wet. So soft. Soft is nice. I like soft. I don't know if I have enough room to put all the zeros, so I'm going to abbreviate. Do you guys know, you want to learn something? Maybe maybe you don't know this. So, you guys, um, generally if you, you write 30,000 and you want to abbreviate it, you write 30K. Do you know that we don't do that in the banking world? We don't. So, well, let me finish this, all right? So if you want to do a million, you would do this, right? That's how normal people do it. But in banking, we use Latin. So our 30,000 is this. That's 30,000. And our million is this. So if you ever get a message from your banker and you're wondering, what are they talking about? This is $600,000, where this would be $600 million. Okay? Is that interesting? I think it is. All right, I promised you something controversial. So controversial it is. Maybe I'll write it. What a great scribing noise this makes, huh?
Can you guys read that okay? So I think there is a portion of my audience that loves when I get controversial. So let's get controversial. Hi. So why did I pull this back out? Because I missed it. This pen, in my opinion, writes better than the Mont Blanc Origin Series 100th Anniversary Pen. Not that that pen writes bad. It writes beautifully. But it's not as unique or as extraordinary as, say, my traditional Mont Blanc 149 or my Egyptomania or my Bohème. It writes a bit like a Pilot Custom 823, which is brilliant. It has some feedback. It's a lovely writer. It, it's very expressive, but it doesn't feel as Monty Blani as it could. It's not as lush and wet and expressive like this bad boy is. I just think this writes better. It writes better than that pen. And I missed it. I missed this pen. I missed writing with it. I miss my dramatic signature when I'm at work. I love to sign my name as dramatically as possible. And this pen just really, really brings out the John Hancock in me. The extravagant signature. Mm. So I missed it. I missed this pen. And that's why I had to bring it out. And see, one of the things that's nice about this channel and our community, our community, that we build here is that I can say these things. There's no one supporting it um, on the whole. We're not selling pens. There's no pen company behind me. I mean, sure, pen companies send me stuff. Um, and, you know, Brendan does and some other folks, which is very lovely. Steelograph Corsani was nice enough to help me with that Mont Blanc. 149 100th anniversary origin series pen he got it to me very quickly so that i could get a video up very quickly lovely fellow can't wait to meet him in rome this november so that's another trip i'm doing is rome in november so um i just think as an independent channel with no store behind me I am just free to just say anything I like. And I am a Mont Blanc fanboy. You guys know that. I love a lot of what they do. A dear friend of mine, I won't say who because I don't want to out them on the channel. But a dear friend of mine just got a Mont Blanc JFK, which I really love. And I, I love that pen. And, um, what was my point? I, I got distracted by somebody asked me what size nib it was. Is it? This is a fine nib on the Pelican M1000. So, this is a fine. So, yeah, I really love, like, the JFK. I'd like to own that. I'm, I'm really in the Mont Blanc, but this pen writes better. This pen is more expressive. It's more interesting. You can... You can do a lot. And I think it's very comfortable. It has a nice diameter. It sits in my hand well. By the way, how do you like this backdrop? It's um, an old map of Venice. Where I'll also be in November. Fair Venice, where we set our scene. Well, that's Verona. But what are you going to do? Ah, so nice. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. This pen is just really interesting.
I guess the one downside is that you don't want to move it. You don't want to touch it until it dries. You need a couple seconds. It puts down a lot of ink. But what a gorgeous nib. Fine nib, pelican, gorgeous two-tone. It's, it's just beautiful. I really like this. And look, I got Darth Lilac handy. Darth Lilac. Beautiful bottle. Has a little Barbie toilet paper roll dispenser down here. That's, that's pretty great. I guess you're supposed to wipe your nib with this, but I'm not really sure how effective that would be. But um, very cool stuff. Does it refill? Does this come off? Hmm. I feel like it would, but I'm not going to mess with it because I will be covered in dark lilac if I'm not careful. But very cool stuff. All right. Very, very cool. So let me um, let me transition over to some of what I'm thinking of. Some of what I'm thinking of for this year in regards to pens. I recently reorganized all my pens. I I have these Jorlojo holders cases rather, which I I like these. Now, I did make a mistake that I bought a lot of the same ones because I love burgundy. I love cordovan. It's my favorite kind of leather. The problem is, unless I burn something in here or, or emboss it somehow, I can't tell which pens are in which one. I just sort of have to remember. But so you get a, a pretty decent, I believe this holds 24. So you get a good amount of pens here. Good amount. I'm going to point out a few things. You know what? I'll put it down. That's probably better. You don't want me to oh, put these in front of your face. So let me put them down so you can see them a little better. We can talk about it. I love our chats. Okay. So this, these are my Mont Blanc pens. Except you won't find the Origin series here because that's put away in its box. It's not far. It can come out again. But I think everything else is here. These are vintage. I really like vintage Mont Blancs. But I'll have to be honest with you. I'm not sure which one is which. I'd really have to look it up. So I know a lot of you said really mean things about the engraving on the cap of the Origin series. But here it is on the vintage ones. It was standard on Mont Blanc for a very long time into the 60s this is probably a here we go so this one and I have it written down somewhere to remember but this is a flex nib and it's a wet noodle it's a really nice flex nib and I never use it it's a shame I really should I should ink this bad boy up right now very nice flex nib, really great ink window. It's not great. And if you like Mont Blanc and you want one, why not go vintage? Why not? For one thing, like look how neat this is. Here's the Glacier Star, but instead of being bright white, it's sort of yellowed, like a 1959 Les Paul. Like the finish on a Les Paul. Love it. How cool is that? That's what you want. You don't want something brand new. You want that. And especially that one. That's a wet noodle. It's beautiful. This one, I, I don't exactly remember the number, but I know it's something 22. And it's one of the more affordable ones. But once again, really nice nib, partially hooded. Beautiful jeweled ink window. Another piston fill. The last one was a piston fill. It's a very light pen. I love this. Look at this. How cool is that? The Glacier Stars on both ends. It's on both ends. It's so fun. Look at that. Very elegant and very elegant. You know, I need to um I need to make a video of these vintage Mont Blancs. They're fascinating. Maybe I am making a video. Maybe this is it right now. Now, this is another one. 
another piston fill, another one with a yellowed glacier, which I quite like. This one has a left oblique, which is pretty exciting. Beautiful, beautiful nib. Great ink window, cleaned up like a gem. These all, I had to clean them because I had ink in them. I've written with all of these, but absolutely stellar. Okay, so what's this one? This is the calligraphy nib. 146, one of the most perfect pens. Gorgeous calligraphy nib. I use this for my handwriting library. I use it to write letters. A lot of the Cognoscenti and Illuminati members get letters from me. With this pen, this is, of course, the 149. A mammoth, but incredibly comfortable, beautiful pen. I, I rank this right with my M1000. These guys are peers. These guys are peers. The M1000 and the Monty Blani. They're friends. They're like cousins. They're both German. So here's a pen that I adore. I made a recent video on the Mont Blanc Bohem. This is sitting it out for a while. It just ran out of ink. This is what it looks like when it runs out of ink. So you take that and then you you go like that. So I'm going to put blue back in it, but it's empty. I might take this traveling with me this year. I don't know about you. What do you think? Doesn't this look like the perfect pen for a trip to Rome? Doesn't it? I, I think it does. Oh, that's so funny. You know, Daily Charm Addict. How are you? Nice to see you. We talk quite a bit on Instagram. She brings up a really good quote. Nice pen. So if anyone is watching Ripley, oops, wrong one. If anyone is watching Ripley on Netflix, as I am right now, this pen is a guest star. It's thinly disguised and carefully shot, but it is a guest star of Ripley and very, very important on the show. So lovely to see the amazing Meisterstück there, the 149 on the Ripley show and you might see it somewhere else very soon so here's another I have the Egyptomania separate because lovely lovely case that was a, a dear gift thank you so much for this so nice um, I mean this this thing is so beautiful Thank you. So, um, I had a point to all this. I can't, oh yes. Okay, I'm going to get there now. But wait, but wait. There's someone I need to recognize. I have to come back. Hello. David Parsons. Hello, how are you? $2 Super Chat. Thank you so much. What can I tell you about the Chapard fountain pens? Um, not much, to be honest. I apologize, but I never have had one. I've never had a Chapard. I've never had an ST DuPont. I've never had an Edison. I've never had a Scribo. There's a whole bunch of pen brands I have not had. And I don't give opinions if I've never had one. I might say something aesthetically, um, but... I don't, but thank you for the super chat. Yes, Terry. Terry Edgington was the lovely person. Um, I think I got I got slightly derailed when I was talking about this gorgeous pen case. So Terry Edgington gave me this pen case. Can you imagine how generous you are and how lovely to give such a lovely gift? This is so great. It's a nice little sarcophagus for my Egyptomania pen. It's just so happy in there. Look at the beetle. I love it. Love this so much. I'm sure this says Great White Mountain, um, as it does on the pen. Very nice case. So thank you so much. I love it. And it's in there all the time. 
So this is a Cartier in Chinese lacquer. It's actually probably the loveliest on camera this has ever looked. This is a very hard pen to photograph. It's hard to get the color and the depth. But do you see the flakes in there and the color? Do you see how pretty this is? It's got a ruby cabochon. I just like to say cabochon. Has a Cartier C on there. Unscrew it. Beautiful nib. Um, one thing, it looks like the nib should be gold, don't you think? But you know what? Set that aside. Lovely writer. Does not post. Maybe it does. But you shouldn't post it. But an absolute beauty, this pen. This was my most expensive pen when I bought it. It was about $1,000. And I bought it when I was very early in my career, about 20 years ago. But it was on sale. It was like 80% off. And I got it for $200. So I was very, very happy. Okay, so this was the whole point of me showing you this. But I have made it to where I'm trying to go. So... The Pelican M100 lives here next to the Cartier. I'm sure they talk. And then, so you have Cartier, Pelican. This is the M600. This is the M200. And there's a space here. This is an M1000, M600, and there's a space here. Why is there a space? What could what could possibly be the explanation? I I don't I can't imagine. Can anybody imagine? Can one of you guys imagine why there's a space between these two? Between the M1000 and the M600? What could possibly go there? If you've guessed the M800, then you have guessed correctly. That's This is like a placekeeper for the M800. It has to come. It has to be part of this collection. It's part of my goals, my fountain pen goals for 2024. The flock needs to be complete. The flock cannot have a missing, a missing bird. You know, I think pelicans, maybe they're like geese. When geese fly, if someone gets tired, they go to the back and then someone else leads and they can draft into the air currents with the rest of the flock. These pelicans cannot fly alone. They need their friend, the M800. So the M800 is one of my pen goals for 2024. How soon will it arrive? Am I done with grails? Does the M800 count as a grail? It's a missing tooth in the smile of my, correct, of my collection. A missing tooth, a gap in the smile of my collection. It has to be filled. I don't make these rules, people. I actually do make these rules. These are my <laughs> rules. But I am super, super happy. So the M800 is coming and i see a lot of love for it in the comments kate the mighty kate who i will see in dc loves her m800 pot and pens the flock needs to be complete it does it can only soar to the heights that it needs to go if it's complete do you want to see what else is in this um in this one while we're at it let's let's take a look at the rest shall we Shall we? Why not? So here we have the Mythos, the Apollo. Anytime I think of Apollo, instead of thinking about um, the Greek myth, which I should think about, I now think about that episode of the original Star Trek where the guy thought he was Apollo and he's like, he grabs the Enterprise and takes him to that to that planet i think actually he was apollo but apollo was an alien they used to be an earth and then he wants people to worship him again it's pretty interesting stuff and then they they shoot his temple which is the source of his power with the phasers and he's like no all right i probably lost half of you with the star trek stuff i'm sorry i'm an old school star trek nerd so this is the visconti homo sapiens a gorgeous gorgeous pen 
By the way, I don't know if you remember Oshin O'Malley, who was on the channel. I interviewed him. He does watch content. He's got a really successful channel, makes beautiful videos. Oshin, on his last live, was gifted this pen. Somebody actually gave it to him, which is very, very nice. Oh, Yorkie Mama, you are awesome. Yorkie Mama's like, I think of Carl Weathers. What an awesome association for Apollo, the mighty Apollo Creed. Although my favorite um, part of Carl Weathers, beside Action Jackson, I was like the one guy who loved Action Jackson. Nobody else probably watched it back in the 80s. He is awesome in Predator. And that scene where he and Arnold lock hands and, he, and they're like... Love it. Love it. So, yes. Oh, lots of Trekkies here, too. Love it. Artful Stationer's a Trekkie. Uh, Lady Manx. Brilliant. Love it. Love the Star Trek love. Oh, wow. Gino goes one higher. Who mourns for Adonis? Indeed. It, who does? Okay, so this is the Conway Stewart Series 58 Indiana Jones pen which I feel like keeps illustrious company with the Visconti and with this Esterbrook because um, they're very similar in size, these two. So I just felt like they needed to be friends. By the way, you have to be very careful with lever fills in this case. But you see how close these are in size? So they needed to be friends. This is how I put my collection together. And since they needed to be friends, that moved Esterbrook kind of on the senior table here with the Monty Blonnies and the Pelicans. But I do love Conway Stewart, as you know. They gave me that pen. I did a review and I was supposed to send it back and I said, I'm keeping it. <laughs> uh, send me a bill. And they never did. So maybe one day they will. But I, I do adore Conway Stewart. This is an Esterbrook Raven. Absolutely brilliant pen. And of course, two Estes. I have other Estes that are in individual cases. I think everyone probably recognizes this one. You know, I don't say that you need to own a fountain pen. I don't tell you or suggest to you that there are fountain pens you must own. But if you pressed me and you said, Hemingway, which fountain pen out of every fountain pen you have do I have to own? I'd say, well, Mont Blancs are nice. Pelicans are nice. Lamy's are nice. Esterbrooks are nice. Conway Stewart's are nice. But out of everything, you have to own the Pilot Custom 823. I think this is the best value pen out there. You get a lot of performance. You get a nib like a $1,000 pen. You get a novel fill system. You get a sleek, beautiful pen. You can post it without feeling guilty or not because it fits in your Perlicue fine without being posted absolutely gorgeous pen and it has a blue feed i love you know i love blue feeds and it kind of begs for blue ink this is full of blue ink yeah you know the the only downfall of this pen it should have metal at the edge of the cap this cap ring should be at the edge if it did i'd say it was perfect but maybe it's good that it's not perfect and the only other thing is that this pen is so fast, so precise, that you almost feel like you're driving a Ferrari on a residential r road. It is brilliant. Brilliant. I probably should get the 743 at some point, too. I'm not the biggest fan of that fill system, but it would be, it would be nice to kind of have both. Here's another great pen, the Vanishing Point. In stealth black, matte black. Very cool. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So, one Mr. Goodman. Super chat, $5. What says, what's the matter, Hemingway Jones? 
CIA got you pushing too many fountain pens. Thanks so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Very, very nice. Very generous and lovely of you. Thank you. You're here all the time. I appreciate that. Thank you. Here's a pen that gets no love on this channel. I still have the sticker on it. This is a Pilot Falcon. Kind of first generation with the flex nib. I didn't like it and I haven't used it, but I, I think I need to revisit it because I feel like my tastes have changed so much that my feelings about this pen are probably no longer valid. It makes a good noise. Plus, I don't know. I feel like I need to fill this up with some really nice red ink. I think I need to. And then, of course, one of the most interesting and best values in all of fountain pens. One of my absolute favorites. The E95S. Just interesting, vintage-looking pen. Absolutely brilliant. Love this one. I don't think this one gets enough love because I don't think it can. It's that good. That amazing. So that was a nice little pen adventure. That was unplanned. <laughs> oh, I have someone else to recognize too. The mighty Kurt Geisinger. Thank you, Kurt. $5 for the Earl Grey Fund. Thank you so much. You know, that was the first moment I ever tried Earl Grey tea. I am not a tea drinker. I've had sort of Lipton and Tetley teas and probably other teas, and I didn't know what they were. And then I used to drink mint tea back when I was a rock climber full-time. Well, kind of full-time, like four times a week. Anytime I camped, I'd have oatmeal and mint tea. Uh, I was very skinny then, although I'm trending thin again, but that's a whole nother story. But anyway, thank you. Thank you for that. So that moment where I tried the Earl Grey tea, which a lot of people didn't see, it's in the blooper reel. And the blooper reel for the teas is in the members section. So if you're a member of the channel, you'd see the blooper reel. And the blooper reel shows me kind of going... Oh my God, this stuff is really good, but with some colorful language because I was shocked at how good Earl Grey tea was. So I was trying those teas and linking them to the inks for the first time. So it was super exciting. Carolina Panther, how are you? $10 for adventures yet to come. Carolina, thank you so much. I love this, the name Panther, it's very cool. Thank you for the $10 of support. I really, really appreciate it. And um, nice to see you here. I hope you'll watch regularly if you don't already because I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Very nice. By the way, does anybody recognize this shirt? Anybody, anybody really sharp out there recognizes and can think of why I'm wearing this shirt? David Parsons, $2 Super Chat. How does the Pelican M800 compare to the 146? David, I'll tell you, I'll let you know as soon as it arrives. It has not arrived. But when I have an M800, I'll be comparing it to a lot of different things. One of the things I really like to do in this channel is to compare what are seemingly disparate pens, if you will. Um, I've compared the Twisby VAC 700R to the Pilot Custom 823. I've compared the Montblanc 149 with, well, the X159. That's a pretty, that's a pretty straightforward comparison. But I know I've compared a lot of other things that are sort of different. So I may compare, you know, a Lamy Safari to a Montblanc 146 or something. But I will certainly compare the M800 to some other pens just to make it very interesting. So we will know. We will indeed know. So very good. Very good. Yes, it is Fred Perry. So the reason I'm wearing this, you know, Fred Perry is very English and... Um, 
Do you remember my fountain pens and film video? Do you remember Russell Crowe in a good year? He wears this exact polo shirt. And I am going to later in a couple weeks, I'll be filming a fountain pen video inspired by a good year. And I had to get the wardrobe. So I am breaking in the wardrobe. I'm mostly a Lacoste guy, but I will wear Fred Perry too. I will indeed. Um, Eric Linneman. You should do rough and ready travel pads that you aren't worried about throwing in a bag. I'm thinking about that. It's actually time for me to do another travel video because it's that time of year. Uh, I was thinking about doing the best pens to fly with. But maybe I'll do something like that too. I do have one other video similar that's already filmed. I think you'll appreciate it. Because one of the biggest news of this week, and if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this. I have filmed with Helen again. This past weekend, we filmed together. It's not cool or not cool this time. We probably will do another cool or not cool at some point because I've I've just received so many new pens since that video came out. But that's not what we did. We thought of something new. So it's completely different. It's more informative, a lot more information. But her and me sitting at the table with our usual banter back and forth and laughing and just having a ball. So I think you guys are going to enjoy that. So expect a Helen video. I believe it comes out at this point at the end of May because I'm about two months ahead. That's usually where I am. But I think you guys will like it. I see Miss Marilyn Darling's here. If you're not subscribed to Miss Marilyn Darling, please do. Please do. Wow, we're almost out of time, which is crazy. There's so much more I want to tell you. So many more things I didn't get to. But at least I give you kind of an idea of what I'm looking at this year uh, pen-wise. And the first one that I feel like I really need to experience and have in the collection is the M800. So look for that. And I've also... I, I've been falling into some rabbit holes here on YouTube. Have you seen Inked Happiness? Inked Happiness is a fountain pen channel out of India. And they recently had the Chennai Pen Show in India. And I was just fascinated by some of the fountain pens there. He is such a lovely guy. He's got a great channel. He's got so much passion. And I love seeing his world. Um, different people in... Um, Seleka Inks was on there, but the Chennai Pen Show was super, super interesting. This one channel, uh, excuse me, this one brand of inks from India is so amazing. It's called Del Moon Fountain Pens, and it is really, really interesting stuff. They have incredible designs. They have, um writing on it um in the indian alphabet i know it's not called that so forgive me i i i just love the the beauty of it though and i just i feel like i need to order a del moon pen now um so go check out inked happiness really interesting channel completely different perspective than any other fountain pen channel which as i think you know is what i i love i love different perspectives james gow Five dollars Australian. Have you ever dropped a pen you valued? The 149. I dropped my Grail pen, the 149, dented it, and I'm really heartbroken. I hope I'm not alone. Oh boy, you know, you're certainly not alone. It happens to everyone. I've been very, very lucky. I can tell you when I got my 146 with the calligraphy nib, I dropped it nib down and it stuck into a linoleum floor and it quivered there like an arrow. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did that. Pulled it out, put my loop on it, it looked fine, 
wrote with it. It wrote without skipping. So I've been very, very lucky. I'm hoping that me vocalizing this doesn't invite some bad circumstances. But I see Lad Gardner is no stranger to dropping pens. He dropped his 146 calligraphy pen on the nib twice. So like me, but with more consequence. So you're not alone. I'm really sorry. I mean, certainly dents, chips, scratches, part of the game. These things are meant to be consumed. They're tools. Enjoy them. Devour them. That's what I say. I quite like them. It happens. It does happen. But thank you so much for your kind, kind support. Thank you guys for all the likes. <sighs> really do like it. Really do appreciate it. I get inspired every time. It's really funny. I was so tired right before we came on the air. Now I feel great. So thank you so much. Um, so... Got a new video this week, the Mahjong Q1. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Oh, yeah, Kirk Eisinger reminds me. So, you know, James Gal, we were talking about. Kurt reminds me, my Waterman Quran was in my hand, and I turned around and I jammed it into a door jam and completely bent it sideways, sent it back to Waterman, and they fixed it. Um, but I was heartbroken and I felt very, very silly. I do have a habit of waving my pens around like I'm trying to banish Voldemort. So I need to stop doing that. Um, certainly in that instance. So we have been there, my friend. We have been there. Alfredo dropped one of his pens. So there we have it. So there you have it. Okay, so new video this week. I'd appreciate it if you give it a look. It's super fun. There are two interesting parts, and I want you guys to tell me when you find them. Two things in this video I really think you're going to enjoy that are completely unique. When you find them, put it in the comments, and I want to see who, which of you find it first. I think you'll get it. Okay, so thank you all. I think we've said it all. We've said quite a bit tonight. So thank you all for being here. Love all you guys. Think you're the best. Thank you for your love and support. We will see each other very, very soon. Thursday, in fact. Further up the road. So take care, everyone. Thanks so much for being here.